it's the Mastermind semi-final. There have been 24 heats, 96 competitors, and now it comes down to this. Six semi-finals, four players in each, to find the six finalists for Mastermind 2022. You can see them now on your screen, streaming through in the order of their scores from lowest to highest. And the highest was Anthony Fish with a fantastic 30 points. He will definitely be one to beat in the semi-finals. But when it comes to the semi-finals, previous form is only an indicator. It is not a guarantee of success. Now, there's been a lot of talk since Hattrick took over Mastermind that there is no longer scope for a highest scoring loser to get through. And what we see this year is that 22 points is the score that would have been the cutoff point had there been high scoring losers. And you have to feel for the likes of Andrew Fanko, who scored 26 and failed to get through. That was the equal fifth highest score of the series. But those are the rules. And what we don't know is whether each episode was equally balanced, because without the repechage, without the high scoring loser, you only have to achieve balance within a particular show. So a 26 or a 27 in one show could be the same level of difficulty, the same level of achievement as a 22 in another show. So it's not entirely all about the scores. Nonetheless, you would be a fool to ignore scores like those of Anthony and Sarah, Patrick Buckingham, Helen Garner, Alice Walker, Lucy Westall, Richard Aubrey. They were fantastic scores. Nor should you read too much into people's specialist subject scores. For one thing, people can improve the skill of learning a specialist subject between first round and semi-final. So we might see some people improving on their earlier performances in the specialist subject round. For another thing, there is less time to prepare for your semi-final subject. People who prepared brilliantly for their first round may find they didn't have enough time for their semi-final. That could influence them. So specialist subjects are an indicator. They're an indicator of how good people can prepare a subject, but they prove nothing. Another really good indicator for the semi-finals is general knowledge scores. And we see a lot of players bunched with the same sort of score of 11 and 12, which makes it all the more remarkable that Anthony and Sarah and Alice and Patrick and Helen got scores of 14, 15 and 16. In two and a half minutes, those scores compared to some of the scores we saw of nine points really could give them a significant and telling advantage in the semi-finals. But again, it's how the questions fall for you on the night. And what we do know is some of the first timers, having been through the experience once, will now come back prepared, not daunted by the black chair. And they may well find that it's a much more comfortable experience in the semi-final than it was in the first round. Over the course of the series so far, we have brought you interviews on Quizzy Monday with quite a number of the Mastermind contenders, and this will continue for the semi-finals. We have at least one contender for every one of the six semi-finals, so join us on Mondays at 9.05pm on Quizzy Monday, the unofficial after show for Monday Night TV quizzing, and you will get to hear from the horse's mouth what it's like to take part in a Mastermind semi-final. We look forward to seeing you there. You will be able to ask questions, you will be able to interact with the contenders, and it will be great fun to have you there.